kama una biblia nikupe kulia kizungu ninayo bwana yesu asifiwe amen uwasiria amboni na upata hapa the nature of god that i'm finding from here ni kwamba mungu anahimiza zaidi neema it is that god is insisting on his grace kwa hiyo mungu anatufu ana na anatufundisha kwamba tukif tukimfuatisha na yeye alivyo that if we follow god the way he is tuta, tuta, tunaweza tukaishi kama yeye kama alivyopenda we can live the way he lived because he lives in love amen so was him What did you say again? What did you say again? Love. Love, okay. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Read the verse. The answer is in the verse. Now I want to say this. Many Bible verses talk about the love of God. Mistari mingi ya Biblia inazungumza kuhusu upendo wa Mungu. But love has different aspects. Lakini hili neno upendo wa Mungu lina mtazamo tofauti. For instance, his acceptance of people, kwa sababu yeye vile anayowakubali watu. He care for the people, anawajali watu. He treasure the people, anawajali watu. He died, Jesus died for them. Yesu alikufa kwa ajili yao. There are different aspects of his love. Ya kwamba kuna mtazamo mingi tofauti ya upendo. But we just say love is too general. Unaposema tu upendo, hili umejumuisha mambo mingi. It should be related to that verse. Ni lazima kinachokisema kiwe kinaambatana na huo mstari. Okay, now because of time I'm going to explain myself because sababu ya muda sasa yeye anataka kueleza afadhali aeleze kwa rasumbu hebu wewe shimbe micro now in verse 28 and 29 both talk about rest katika mstari wa 28 na 29 yote tunazungumza kuhusu pumziko but you notice in verse 28 lakini unagundua katika mstari wa 28 it says that when you have a weary and burden you come to me ya kwamba wewe kama umechoka unakuja kwangu come for help yani uje upate msaada and then i will give you rest and itakupa pumziko so is someone who has difficulties ya kwamba kama kuna mtu ambaye ana ugumu wote and come to jesus and he'll find rest aje kwa kristo yesu atapata pumziko but then in verse 29 is different lakini sasa katika mstari wa 29 nimetumika tofauti take your yoke ya kwamba yoke chukua nira yangu what does that mean hiyo inamaanisha nini the yoke is put on the ox and ox to pull the plow Yaani nira inawekwa kwenye wale ngombe ambao wanalima sijui mnawahitaji kwenye Kiswahili. So take my yoke means to serve God with me. Yaani inamaanisha kuchukua kuchukua nira ni wewe kufanyia kufanyia Mungu kazi. Do what I'm called what Jesus has been called to do. Je, unajua um, Yesu ameitwa ama ametuma kuja kufanya nini? So take my yoke means serve God with me. Kwa hiyo chukua nira yangu inamaanisha kwamba ufanye kazi pamoja na Kristo Yesu. And it's not just we who serve na sio sisi ambao tunatumika is with jesus together lakini tunatumika pamoja na kristo yesu and then the second thing is learn from me na ya pili ni kwamba jifundishe kutoka kwangu that means learn his nature ina maanisha kwamba ujifundishe uasilia wa mungu and what nature does he talk about here na uasilia wa ni gani hapa unaozungumziwa now this verse tells us his nature's straightforward Yaani mstari huu unaenda unaenda moja kwa moja katika uwasilia wa Mungu. Look at the verse. What does it say that Jesus has this what nature? Angalia mstari, ni uwasilia gani ambao Yesu anazungumzia hapa? The Bible verse says it. Biblia inazungumza kuhusu. So what does it say that Jesus what nature he has? Yesu mesemu unatuambia, kwa hiyo Yesu anawasilia upi hapa? Right in the verse. Yaani he can say out where you are. Ika hapo tu penye huko penye huko this nature there it says right here look at the verse it's right there iko kwenye nguo mstari angalia hapa because Jesus said i kwa sababu Yesu anasema mimi i what you look at it mimi ni nani hapo vile maandiko yamesema mimi ni mtoto na mnyenyekevu i'm gentle and humble and humble yeah yes this verse say out clearly god's nature 
Yaani huo mstari sasa unazungumza kuhusu uhalisia wa Mungu kwa ushatuambia mapema hivyo that in the heart of Jesus in the heart of God he is, he is gentle ya kwamba katika moyo wa Kristo Yesu kuna upole he is not rough ya kwamba yeye sio mtu tu he is gentle with people ya kwamba yeye ni mpole na watu he will sympathize with you yeye wa anawahurumia watu he will help you atakusaidia i'm using different words to explain this word na tumia maneno tofauti kueleza hili neno upole and i'm humble na mimi mimi ni mpole nimejenyekea how is jesus humble basi huyu huyu yesu amenyenyekea vipi he came to the world to die for us alikuja duniani kufa kwa ajili yetu he was rejected by the people alikataliwa na watu that is his humility yani huo huo ni mwenyekevu wake He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Yeye ni mfalme wa falme na na bwana wa mabwana. Everyone in the world has to bow down before him. Kila mmoja duniani lazima asujudie mbele zake. But he was willing to humble himself. Lakini yeye alikuwa tayari kujinyenyekesha chini. Let him even die for us. Mpaka akafa kwa ajili yetu. So he has this great humility. Kwa hivyo yeye ana huu unyekevu wa hali ya juu. And then he said I'm gentle and humble in heart. Anasema kwamba mimi ni mpole na mnyenyekevu kwa maneno. That means he's not just showing off. Inamaanisha kwamba yeye katika moyo wake hatuachilii. Inside him he is gentle and humble. Ndani mwake yeye ni mnyenyekevu na mpole. Now many people inside us we have some anger. Na wakati watu wengine ndani mwetu tuko na hasira. Or unhappy feelings with people. Ama ana yani yani ni mtu ambaye anapomuona mwenzie anasikia vibaya. Or fear or worry. Ama tuna uoga na ama tumebabaishwa. Tu, tu, But inside God is very beautiful. Lakini ndani ya Mungu kuna pendeza. He's very gentle inside. Yeye ni mpole ndani mwake. He's very humble inside. Yeye ni mnyekevu ndani mwake. He is also humble to minister to each person. Na hata yeye ako tayari kunyenyekea kuhudumia kila mmoja. Even when we disobey him. Hata wakati tum, hatujamtii. In John 16 verse 8. Yohana 16 mstari wa 8. Yohana 16 mstari wa 8. When the Holy Spirit comes he will convict the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment. Ya kwamba wakati Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu atakapokuja atahukumu ulimwengu kwa sababu ya dhambi zao katika njia ya haki na katika njia ya hukumu. So he will The Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin. Kwa hivyo Roho Mtakatifu atatuhukumu kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu. And Jesus is knocking at our heart. Na Yesu anabisha katika mioyo zetu. So the Holy Spirit and Jesus are ministering to us all the time. Roho Mtakatifu na Yesu Kristo wanatuhudumia kila wakati. Now I give an illustration. Anatumia mfano. I thank you very much when I come to this place. Ninawashukuru sana nilipokuja sehemu hii. You have different people help me. Kuna watu tofauti ambao wamenisaidia. The people help me to cook. Kuna watu ambao wamenisaidia kupika chakula na chakula. And take my heavy bag. Na wengine wakanisaidia kupiga mkoba wangu. And do the recording. Na mwingine hapa ijapo kwa nasinzia lakini nasaidia kurekodi. You are helping me. Yaani unatusaidia. Of course I'm helping you too. Kwa sababu hata mimi pia nawasaidia. But can you imagine? Lakini hebu hebu fikiria. If your president comes here. Kama rais wenu angelikuja hapa. Let me come to you and say let me take off your shoes for you. Alafu rais wako akuja kuambia akole umevaa vieto akamwambia kwa akamwambia mzee chali hebu nikafungue vitu hivyo. Let me wash your feet for you. Hebu nioshe miguu zako. What would you say? Utasemaje? Sometimes you push it a few times to stop. No, no. Down below, keep. You push, keep. He didn't understand. When it's oh, okay, okay. So you say, oh, president, Mr. President. You cannot serve me like that. But Jesus, the Son of God. Move in our heart all the time. Yeye anafanya kazi mioyoni mwetu kila wakati. Comfort us all the time. Anatutuliza na kutufariji kila wakati. We will even when we were disobedient. Hata wakati ambapo tumekuwa na viburi tumebeba vichwa tumekataa kutii. How many times when we sin? Ni safari ni mara ngapi ambapo tunapotenda dhambi? The Holy Spirit never gave up on us. Roho Mtakatifu hakutuachilia. So he's very 
come to come to us and humble to minister to us. So I hope you say, Lord, you minister to me like this. But I don't want to disappoint you. I really want to respond to you and love you and obey you. I really want to serve you. When I discover so many good things about God, I really admire God. I really like God and I'm going to do anything for God because the more I discover the meaning of humble he did not have to serve us like this and his ministry to millions and millions of people even when we go to heaven will he stop ministering to us in heaven no in heaven we will experience his joy and love every second so that's God moving in our heart all the time to, for, until eternity to eternity he never stopped serving us. Isn't it wonderful? Do we serve God forever? Do we serve God every second? Do we serve God God serves us every single second. Mungu yeye anatuhudumia kila sekunde. The more I think about God's work, I say, God, I'm not worthy. But you are so wonderful. When I discover your nature, it's beautiful beyond imagination. Isn't it true? Now when I explain this nature of God I'm helping you to feel how good God is, right? My message has feelings, right? It's not just knowledge. It's a feeling from my heart that I want to convey to you. So I hope you really learn this. Now you can watch, go on YouTube and watch Pastor Yip and watch your other videos. And this teaching is called God's nature. God's nature. God's nature Bible study. But this is in English. But you can hear the interpretation in Kiswahili. Okay, now the verse continues. You, you will find rest for your souls. Now what is the difference between this rest and the first rest? The first rest is only when we just come to Jesus for help. When we believe in Jesus, or when we pray to Jesus for help, this second rest is when we take Jesus' yoke. When we serve Him, but we also learn from Him. We serve in a way Jesus wants us to serve. 
Because some people serve God like this. They say, oh, it's very heavy. It's hard work. People don't change. I'm burdened. And you met him who served God like that? But Jesus said, learn from me. Because I'm gentle and meek and humble. And I have perfect rest in me. So when you serve God and learn from me, you just say, I receive the teaching from God and I'll teach the people and I will give it to God. I can entrust it to God. Now I will try to help people individually but I don't have to carry the burden. So that's mean that we learn from him. Now, to learn from him, that means what is his nature? That means Jesus, now this is his nature now. That he has perfect teaching and he has a perfect life example. Now, this to you right now. It's not obvious just by the verse, but this is something I discovered. So learn from Jesus. What do you learn? From the Bible, you know, learn his teaching. He has many good teachings. So we learn his teachings. But here Jesus said, it's not just learning the teaching, but learn his nature of gentleness and humility. And his perfect peace. Why does Jesus have perfect peace? Because he know that the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit can do everything. He doesn't have to worry about anything. Everything will be accomplished according to his plan. You will say, if I were God, I would, I would relax too. But I'm not God, so how can I relax? Now this is very important application. It's true, we're not God. I cannot make everything happen. But the wonderful thing is, Jesus will help us all the way through. It's Jesus' ministry. We are just his servant. It's not our ministry. It's his work. He's teaching me how to teach. I just convey what Jesus did. And when I just listen to him, and I do my part, I know God is responsible. So I can relax. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> because I know God is responsible. I'm not God, but I have God behind me. Do you have God behind you? Do you have God behind you? Amen. Yes, but many people, they say, Jesus, I'll carry myself. It's my church. And we carry the burden. But the more we carry the burden, we we'll look very sad. No joy. So Jesus said, learn from me. Now, is this from this verse? 
Did I get it from this verse? Yana na uliza mambo haya na zungumza je ameyotoka katika huo mstari? He said I'm gentle and humble. Maana kumstari unasema kwamba mimi ni mpole na mnyekevu. And he has the perfect peace. Na yeye ako na amani ambayo inatosheleza. Because everything is in God's hand. Kwa sababu kila kitu kimo mikononi mwa Mungu. Now some part of this teaching we have to arrive at by thinking about what God's nature and what he does. Mafundisho haya tunaweza basi kuyaelewa tunapoelewa kuhusu uasilia wa Mungu. I know that God has a lot of work to do and he's at peace. Najua kwamba Mungu ana kazi nyingi ya kufanya lakini yeye ako na amani. And from the whole Bible we know that everything is in God's hand. Na kutoka katika Biblia yote tunaelewa kwamba kila kitu kimo mikononi mwa Mungu. The world is his and everything in it is his. Dunia na vyote viliyomo duniani ni mali ya Mungu. So we put these teachings together. Tunaweka mafundisho haya pamoja. I don't have the word. Mimi sasa sina chochote ambacho nikitanibabaisha. I can Relax. Weza kupo muzika. But I tell you, lakini na kuambi. As a human being, kama manadamu akawaida. Sometimes I still worry. Wakati mgeni pia huwa ni nawaza. So I want to learn. Tana kujifundisha to put down as much burden as possible. Uweka chini mizigo ya mukadri ya uwezo wa. Whenever I worry, wakati ni napo kuwa na mawazo. Whenever I hear a member has some problem, ni napo sikia kuamba kuna msirika fulani yako na matatizo. I will have some worry. Mimi ni takuwa pia na mawazo. But when I tell myself, lakini ni napo ni chukua. Everything is in God's hand. Na ni sene kuamba mani na kuyote. God you take care of that. Mambo yote ya katika mikono za Mungu utasema Mungu unashughulikia. Hallelujah. Mimi Joshua tu. Naona mimi nitakutengenezea majengo. That is a better way to do ministry, is it? Yaani hiyo ndio njia rahisi ya kutengeneza huduma ama sio? Is it true? Je, ni kweli? Which way is better? Njia gani hiyo nzuri? Carrying the burden is it better? Kubeba msigo mgongoni? Is it better? Hiyo ni nzuri. No. Do you want to learn Jesus way? Na jeu ngalipenda kujifundisha kuhusu njia ya Kristo. Just let God carry the burden. Ya kwamba wacha Mungu abebe mizigo. We just trust in him. Yaani tumwamini tu and join him. Na tumfurahie. So we are quiet inside. Ili kwamba ndani mwetu sisi tumetulia. Peaceful inside. Ndani tuko na amani. When we are quiet peaceful we can hear from God more. Ya kwamba unapokuwa na amani utaweza kusikia sauti ya Mungu. It's not a very audible voice. Sio Sorry, not audible voice. It's not. Aha, kuna uwezekano sio ya sauti ambayo inaweza kusikika. Now some people can hear God's voice audibly. Watu wengine wanaweza kusikia sauti ya Mungu ikinena tu. I don't. Lakini yeye hapana. But when I pray, I receive teachings. Lakini anapoomba, anapokea mafundisho. It will come into my heart. Ita nakuja katika moyo wake. When you hear this teaching these few days, unaposikia mafundisho haya hizi siku chache ambazo umekuwa hapa. Do you find the teaching very different, very special? Ji una unaweza kusema haya mafundisho ni mazuri, yamekusaidia? Amen. And I want to say it's not me. Anataka kusema so yeye. It's not from me. Haitoki kwake. This God is so wonderful. Ni Mungu ambaye ni wa ajabu. I just discovered God is so wonderful. Yaani amegundua kwamba Mungu ni wa ajabu. So I keep searching in the Bible looking for his nature. Kwa hiyo anaendelea kuangalia katika Biblia akifungua uasilia wa Mungu. And his grace and his wonderful work. Na neema na kazi yake ya ajabu. So when we learn from him, kwa hivyo unapojifundisha kutoka kwake. And what does the Bible say? Na sasa Biblia inazungumza nini? You will find rest for your soul. Utapata pumziko la nafsi yako. What's the difference between this rest and the first rest in verse 28? Sasa utofauti ulioko hapo na ulio pumziko la kwanza ni upi? Verse 28 is when you just come for help. Msari wa 28 ni kwamba unapokuja tu kwa ajili ya msaada. Verse 29 is when we are willing to serve God. Na mstari wa 29 ni kwamba kama uko tayari kumtumikia Mungu also when we learn the lifestyle of Jesus. Na unapojifundisha maisha na mitindo ya Kristo Yesu. Learn his peace and his humility. Ujifundishe amani yake, uh, upole wake na unyekevu wake and then we'll find rest in our hearts. Pumziko ndani ya mioyo zetu. For your souls. Pumziko la nafsi So it's rest for the soul inside. Kwa hivyo ni pumziko ndani mwetu is it deeper rest je ni pumziko la kiundani kabisa is it a deeper rest je ni pumziko la vilindini rest for your soul is it deeper 
yani kujipumzisha kwa nafsi yako ni kwa unani ama ni kwa nje is it deeper compared to verse 28 is 29 deeper msayo wa 9 uko ndani zaidi au uko nje zaidi you can answer what is deeper yeah Of course because it says it go to your soul. Kwa sababu amesema inaingia ndani ya nafsi yako. Hallelujah. Amen. You can have total rest like Jesus. Unaweza kuwa na pumziko ya ndani kabisa kama ya Kristo Yesu. Of course we're not perfect like Jesus. Ijapo kuwa sisi hatuko sawa kama Kristo Yesu. But you'll be more and more like Jesus. Lakini utakuwa kama Kristo Yesu. Inside you you'll find more and more rest. Yaani ndani utapata pumziko pumziko. The whole person is in rest. Wewe kama wewe utapumzika. And joy can flow from you. Na furaha itabubutika ndani mwako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This on earth as it is in heaven. Yaani ifanyike hapa mbinguni jinsi inavyofanyika mbinguni. You live on earth as if you were in heaven. Unaishi hapa duniani vile unavyoishi mbinguni. You want to live like that? Yamani duniani kuna matatizo. Lakini je, ungelipenda kuishi hivyo? Hallelujah. Utaoga baridi hata ukiiba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Lord. I worship This is not beautiful. This is not beautiful. Sirmi ajabu. Do you agree? Unakubaliana yeye? That is wonderful. Huyu ni maajabu, sema amen. Hallelujah. Now. Look at this verse. The nature of God I will explain more this in this verse. Hallelujah. And I endeleo kueleza uwasilio wa Mungu katika mstari wa 29. Now first part, take my yoke. Sehemu ya kwanza chukua nira yangu. That means Jesus like to work with us in our in the ministry. Inamaanisha kwamba Yesu anafurahishwa sana kufanya na sisi kazi katika huduma. Is Jesus ministry? Huduma huu ni huduma wa Kristo Yesu. So he said my yoke ndio ndio maana Yesu anasema nila yangu yani huduma ministry yani huduma wa Kristo Yesu so wako his nature is kwa hivyo wasilia wake ni he's in control of the whole church ya kwamba Kristo yeye ndiye anafaa ku eh, toa mwelekeo wote wa kanisa all ministries belong to god huduma zote ni za Mungu and then he will work with us na yeye atafanya kazi pamoja na sisi. Atatubeba tu atupitishe ndani. And then learn from him. Ujifundishe kutoka kwake. And the nature of God is na uwasilia wa Mungu ni in every way Jesus is beautiful and glorious. Katika kila njia zote Yesu anavutia na yeye ni wa utukufu. Now I can say learn some of the things from me. Anaweza kusema kwamba jifundisheni vitu vingine kutoka kwake. But I cannot say learn everything from me. Lakini hawezi kusema jifundishe kila kitu kutoka kwake. Because I cannot give you. Kwa sababu siwezi nikakupa. But Jesus said learn from my whole being. Lakini Yesu anasema jifundishe kutoka kila kitu kutoka kwangu. From my teaching and my life. Kutoka kwenye mafundisho yangu na kwenye uzima wa maisha yangu. I have been perfection. Kwa kwamba mimi sina eh, sina uchafu wowote. But Jesus has is everything is perfect lakini kwa kristo yesu kila kitu kiko safi so jesus is worthy to be learned kwa hiyo yesu ndicho kitu kikuu ambacho inafaa tujifundishe kutoka kwake he has everything perfect that's his nature ah, kwa hivyo uwasilia wa kristo yesu hapo ni kwamba yeye ako na kila kitu kilicho sawa both his teaching and his nature are perfect mafundisho yake na uwasilia wake zote ziko sawa sawa so we can learn from him kwa hivyo tunaweza kujifundisha kutoka kwake and then we can become more and more perfect na tunaweza kuwa wazuri wazuri zaidi so god is perfect for us to learn from kwa hivyo mungu yeye ndiye eh, kitu cha maana sisi kujifundisha kutoka kwake and then he can give you rest in your soul na atakupa pumziko katika nafsi yako that means god can penetrate your soul inamaanisha kwamba mungu anaweza penyeza katika nafsi yako God doesn't work on the outside. Mungu hafanyi kazi katika maumbile ya kiinji. He has ability to go into your soul. Yeye huenda kwenye vilindi vya nafsi yako. And transform your whole soul. Na anabadilisha nafsi yako. 
Some people serve God just from the outside. Watu wengine wanapomtumikia Mungu wanatumikia Mungu kwa maumbile ya nje tu. But if you have God's nature in your soul, lakini ukiwa na uasilia wa Mungu katika vilindi vya nafsi yako, it will come out naturally. Itatoka sasa ionekane nje. You naturally will be peaceful and loving. Ya kwamba utakuwa mtu wa kupenda watu na mtu wa kufurahia watu. You naturally want to bless people. Utataka kubariki watu wote. You naturally want to dedicate to God. Utataka kujitoa kwa ajili ya Mungu. So God can give that life in us. Kwa hivyo Mungu anaweza kutupa uzima na kimwili to be learned from. Ya kwamba ni Mungu ndio ambaye inafaa tujifundishe kutoka kwake. So you notice wow there's so many things we can learn from this verse. Sasa umegundua kwamba kuna vitu vingi ambavyo tunaweza kuvisoma kutoka kwa mstari. I tell you, nakwambia, take time to meditate on how what nature God has chukua muda kutafakari kwamba Mungu huyu anawasilia upi. And what his his grace and his works so that we can experience him like this. Na pia ujue neema yake na maneno yake ya neema ili ukapate kuhisi mambo ya ajabu ya Mungu. Okay, and then verse 30. Mstari wa 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ya kwamba nira nira yangu ni ni laini na mzigo wangu ni mwepesi. Now this again talk about his nature is very obvious. Kwa hivyo uasilia wa Mungu hapo unaonekana tu wazi. Can you tell me anyone tell me from this verse is very obvious his nature. Katika huo mstari wa 30 ya kwamba nia la Kristo ni rahisi na mzigo wake ni mwepesi. Uasilia wa Mungu unaonekana wazi wazi. Kuna mwenye angelipenda kumwambia Soma sasa mstari. Soma Biblia. It says right there. Look at the verse. Angalia katika Biblia yako. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Nira yangu ni nyepesi, ni rahisi na mzigo wangu ni mwepesi. This is very obvious too. Soma kwa Biblia yako, yani inaonekana wazi. Okay. Now I'm going to explain it because of time. Anataka kueleza kwa sababu anaona kama nyinyi hamuoni. That means God is so peaceful inamaanisha kwamba Mungu ni Mungu wa amani he can manage all the work at the same time anaweza kukimu kazi zote na kwa wakati huo pia and he is peaceful na yeye ni wa amani and he can carry each one of us when we serve him kwa hivyo anaweza kubeba kazi za kila mmoja unapomtumikia he can give us strength atakupa basi nguvu he can give us direction and wisdom atakupa mwelekeo na hikima he can give us a power of the holy spirit atatupa vipawa vya roho mtakatifu he can give us a strategy atatupa mipangilio kabambi so everything is in his hand kwa hivyo kila kitu kiko katika mikono za Mungu so his burden will be very light kwa hivyo mzigo wake utakuwa mwepesi zaidi because he carried it from the beginning to the end kwa sababu yeye alibeba uh, aliubeba kutoka mwanzo hadi mwisho Now Jesus invites you to serve him is like this. Na Yesu anapokualika ili kufanya naye kazi naenda hivi. Jesus has a car. Has a car. Ah Yesu ana gari, ni mfano na pia. He said come on in. Anasema kila mtu aingie kwenye hili gari langu. Stay on the car. Ingieni na mbaki kwenye gari. Follow my direction. Na ukafuate mwelekeo wangu. And then Jesus will guide the car to go. Na sasa Yesu ndiye atakayeongoza ile gari kwenda. Jesus put and uh, the gasoline there na Yesu ndiye anayeweka mafuta kwenye lile gari and he will guide the car along kwa hivyo yeye ataliendesha lile gari you just do your part ya kwamba wewe utafanya tu sehemu yake now when you steer the car then Jesus will guide you which way to go kama wewe ndio utakuwa driver kuendesha lile gari Yesu atakuwa anakuambia kupitia hapa so serving God is not like a, an ox kwa hivyo basi kumfanyia Mungu kazi sio kama yule ngombe wa kubeba nira anapolipa. It's not like an ox carrying a heavy burden. Sio kama yule ngombe ambaye amebeba ile nira nzito. Serving God is like you hop onto the car of God. Yaani kumtumikia Mungu ni mfano wa kuingia katika gari la Kristo Yesu. He give you the gasoline. Yeah, yesu anakupa mafuta. He give you where to steer. Anakuonyesha vile unavyo kuendesha gari. He give you strength all the time. Anakupa imiza kuendelea. And you just enjoy God all the way. Wewe unafurahia Bwana kwa njia yote. And you find that you can go and do what God wants you to do. Na utapata unaweza kwenda kufanya kile ambacho Mungu anataka ufanye. Is it true? Wewe ni ukweli? 
Now, my teaching it seems very simple to understand. It seems to be simple. When you hear it, you find your life change. It's not me. It's God's teaching. And if you want to learn it and spread it, I can help you. And I thank God for this teaching which is so simple. Basically, God loves us. He cares for us. He take away our burden. He provide for us. Give us the wisdom. Give us the strength. He help us all along. So what we do, relax in Him. Trust in Him. Have a good relationship with him. And then God will guide us what to do. And then you find that the yoke is light. And the burden, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. Because he is capable from the beginning to the end. So the nature of God here, he is can Accomplish it from beginning to end. Yeah, we just follow Jesus' way. And learn his life. Let me ask you. Is it important to find out God's nature in these three verses? Now, if people just explain, okay, you trust in God, you obey him. And you learn from it, and then you find rest. If you just explain the verse, and then people just, okay, I'll come to Jesus, I will take the yoke, I'll learn from Jesus, and this is what the verse says. He will not see how beautiful God is. What I try to do is, let you see how beautiful God's nature is. How glorious he is. How powerful he is. How humble he is. How he treasures us. So that you have the strength to follow him with no burden. And you find rest in your soul. Because his joke is easy and his burden is light. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What do you think about this method of Bible study? There's so much to talk about God, right? Now, tomorrow, if you want me to talk about some verses, you can tell me. Now, tomorrow we have a short, we have a, a short session. So come punctually at 10, we'll start at 10. We have to take the 2.30 ferry. Now go home tonight and study some Bible verses and find God's nature and grace in it. Nature and grace in it. And I want to say it takes time. I can do it because I have done it so many times. Whenever I have time, I think about God and His nature. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you have any question? Do you think you can start to use this method to do Bible study? Now, you need to read the Bible and have a notebook. 
Lazima unaposoma Biblia uwe na mahali pa kuweka eh, pa kuandika. And you look at the verse and then you write down God's nature. Yaani unasoma mstari alafu unaandika uwasilie wa Mungu. And the more you do it the better you can do it. Na jinsi utakalofanya ndio utakavyoshika mambo haya. Okay? No question? Hakuna swali? Okay, now. Now today we talk about a number of things. We talk about how not to be affected by people. Leo tumezungumza vitu vingi kuhusu tumezungumza vitu kama jinsi ya kutoadhirika na watu. How to uh, overcome negative thinking and feelings and sins. Jinsi ya kushinda mawazo kinyume, jinsi ya kushinda dhambi. So I hope you apply to your life. Kwa hivyo natumaini kwamba utaiweka kwenye maisha yako. And this afternoon we talk about God's nature Bible study method. Na mchana huu pia tumezungumza kuhusu jinsi ya kujifundisha uasilia wa Mungu katika maandiko. I hope you apply it. Kwa hivyo naomba kwamba utayaweka kwenye mazoezi. Ma, ma, and I'm looking for people who can teach it. Anatafuta watu wanaoweza kufundisha mambo haya. If you can write and speak English, kama unaweza kuzungumza kizungu, that you can we can have a What's up group for those people who want to learn to serve God better? Kama eh wale ambao mnaweza kuandika Kiingereza, mnatengeneza group ya WhatsApp alafu mnamjulisha. And then I'll help you how to understand these teachings better. Atawasaidia jinsi ya kuelewa mafundisho haya vizuri. And then one day you can teach other people and train other people. Na siku moja pia wewe utaweza kwenda kufundisha watu. And I hope you have this heart. Na ninatumaini kwamba mtakuwa na huu moyo to be used by God kutumika na, m, na Mungu in a very relaxed and joyful way. Kwa njia tu ya kupumzika je sio kuwa na bubudha. Na in your relationship with your family members too. Basi hata itasaidia ita uhusiano katika familia yako. Go home and love them in a relaxed way. Nenda nyumbani na ukajifundishe katika njia iliyo ya upole. Your family relationship to change. Uhusiano wenu katika familia utabadilika. Okay, let us stand up and pray. Hebu tukasimame na tuombe sasa. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. Watu wote kusimama. Asante Yesu. You're so wonderful. Wewe ni wa ajabu. That you are gentle and humble. Ya kwamba wewe ni mpole na mnyenyekevu. You are peaceful. Wewe ni wa amani. In you we can find perfect peace. Ndani mwako tunapata amani ya kutosha. You're so wonderful, God. Wewe ni wa ajabu Mungu. Please close your eyes everyone. Hebu fumba macho kila mmoja. Kila mmoja funika macho yako. You're so wonderful. Wewe ni wa ajabu. Help us to discover you more. Tusaidie tukakufumbue zaidi. Find out how wonderful you are. Tuone vile ulivyo wa ajabu. That we really like you. Ya kwamba tutakupenda zaidi. We want more of you inside us. Ya kwamba tunakuhitaji mwingi wewe ndani yetu. We want to let you control our life. Tunataka wewe udhibiti maisha yetu. So that our life will follow your way. Ili kwamba tukafuate njia yako. It's so wonderful to have a God like you. Ni ajabu kuwa na Mungu wa ajabu. Kama wewe. There is none like you. Hakuna mwingine kama wewe. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. We enjoy you Jesus. Tunakufurahia Bwana. We love you Jesus. Tukupenda Bwana. We want Jesus. Tunakutaka Yesu. Haleluya. Haleluya. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. We enjoy you. Tunakushirikia. We relax in you. Tunapumzika na ni mwako. We hold on to you. Sisi tunayegemea. We depend on you. Tunakutegemea.